Cindy Harrison, and thank you for joining us in the Zoom room today. Uh, Paint with Heart Studios here. I've been a decorative painter for over 20 years. I've been teaching throughout the U.S. at conventions and chapters and in my home studio. And tonight we're going to be doing the uh, fabric painting. I teach many different kinds of painting, uh, you know, mediums, but we're going to be doing fabric tonight. And here's my co-host, Melissa Reyes. Say hi. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, hi from Southern California. Um, we're really anxious to get started tonight, and I look forward to doing buttons and bows on Paint With Heart. Thank you. <laughs> A little technical difficulty there, but thank you for hanging in with us. Um, I first what well, I didn't but you should always wash your fabric first to get the sizing out and then I ironed it onto freezer wrap paper and so I put the front side down of the fabric like that and then I put the wax side of the freezer wrap paper against the backing of the fabric and I ironed it so that way there, it secured it. And this is probably the best thing to do when you're working on a fabric that has elasticity so that it keeps it taut to your surface uh, so that when you're painting it, it doesn't jiggle all around. So now that I have my design, I mean, my paper ready, my fabric ready with my freezer wrap paper on the back side of it, how do we create a design? A lot of people say over the years, and I myself am one of them, I don't know how to draw. Well, <laughs> guess what? You don't have to know how to draw. You have to be able to recognize shapes. So first off, I had this cookie cutter. It's just a cookie cutter, but guess what? It's a flower. I also have this is going to blow your mind. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe you've done this before. Guess what that is? Ooh. Smells real good. It's celery. So this will make a flower as well. Another thing that I have are rubber stamps. Flower petaled rubber stamps. So if you don't know how to draw, you can use any of these tools to create your flowers. And I will show you how each one separately. Um, for this one, I have either an Identa pen or a Sharpie. Now those look straight for you because they look backwards to me. It's, it's fine. It looks straight. Okay. So um, you want to make sure that they're for fabric and they're um, waterproof and they won't run. Everyone, I think they all run eventually. Decide where your flowers are going to live. I'm going to probably put this one right here in the middle. And then you can... Trace that on, and it's not perfect, but you can go back and put that together. So you have that flower, correct? Correct. To get any, if you're gonna use the cookie cutter again for cookies, I would go and take some um, hand sanitizer and take a little bit of that and you can wash it right off and then wash your um, cookie cutter off with soap and water after you've eliminated the, the marker. Okay, that's one. Now this one here. Sorry. The other thing that um, you need, you should have when you're doing this is either some so soft paint or other kinds of fabric paint. Tulip has them out also. Or you can use your regular bottled acrylic paint and fabric painting. So let's put out some paint and see if we can create uh, a rose with 
a flower with this. I'm going to take a brush. If you put it in the water, make sure you get all the water out. And I'm going to, this one looks like it's a glitter, a glitter um, paint. So let's see what kind of design I get out of that. So I need a stronger color of paint. If I take my acrylics and I mix some fabric medium with it, the difference between using a, a, an, a bottled acrylic and um, a so soft is a so soft will dry soft and you can crumble it and fabric paint, I mean, sorry, the acrylic paint is a harder plastic. So let's see what I get out of this. Okay. And I rock it because it wasn't cut evenly. Oh well, it's a little juicier than I want. It does work. I have seen it work. <laughs> it's just not working for me. <laughs> okay. Next is my rubber stamps. Two things with this one. Either you can use it as as a template and rubber stamp onto a piece of paper and then cut it out and then use that to trace on here. Or you can use it to stamp right on it. So if I paint this with some pink, I should be able to stamp it right on, see? That looks nice. I really like that. I'm going to go on both sides first, and then I'm going to go around. If I do like north, south, east, west, and then I can put it in the middle of each of that, I'm leaving a space for a surprise in the middle. If you can't guess what that is. Is it a picture of me? Yes. How did you guess? I don't know. I know how much you love me. I love you. So if you had, if you had, um, see, you've got me all flustered. A clear stamp, you could see through it. Okay. You can wash that off with hand sanitizer or rubbing alcohol or a stamp cleaner. That, the surprise in the middle is buttons. So you can put the button in the middle. See? I have mine up so you can see. Oh, hold on. Let me spotlight you. Of course. Hold on. Oh, look at that. I used the stencils. Yep. There you go. But they're not very even, but I could put some leaves or something. So, right. So, there you go. You can use stencils too. See? So, there's a bunch of stuff in the house that everybody's got something that they can use. And now I got this mess here. I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do with that. These little ones fit right in there. And I'm going to get rid of these. So definitely, um, if you're undecided about how, how do you decide what color you want your flowers to be, if you go find your buttons, the buttons will dictate what colors you're going to have on your palette. 
so you can use those colors. Um, let's see. So also you can do something like, I wish I had yellow ones, but if you had, if you had three like of the same ones, you could do a cluster of three in the middle. So anything is possible. I have a green one. So say we had yellow. And I'm going to stick some yellow out here on my palette. If you have a filbert brush or a round brush, I'm going to get a big filbert. So I have this um, 5 8 inch filbert brush. And what I'm going to do is see how it fits that round area. So I load up my brush. And then you can paint in your yellow. And you can keep that outline there. Of course, if you're gonna do yellow, it's gonna show up through the yellow anyways. Then when this dries, it, we can go back over it with more, with more ink lines. Like this one's dry now. So if I wanted to, which I do, I can now draw around it. And if it doesn't get exactly, hello. Thank you for joining us. So if it doesn't get exactly, if you go over the line or inside the line or whatever, it's all good, it doesn't matter. Because it's just fabric. So, say I want to do a design. This leaf, this petal, I want to do lines. This one, I can do polka dots. So, this one, I can do those round things like from last week. This one I can do squigglies, like party favors, streamers. See how each one can be um, a little different. I'm gonna make these lines a little thicker and then go across. And if you wanna do
So I'll make this one checkered. So you got the you got the main gist of the fact that although I do have rubber stamps with different designs on it, ooh, bless you. Sorry, of course he sneezes as soon as I take it off mute. <laughs> Hey, um, hi to SCH1535. If you'd like to use the chat and let us know who you are, we'd love to, to introduce you. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Be able to call you by name. <laughs> See, so you can always do as much as you want, as little as you want. And this is an Identa pen for those who joined us that I'm marking on my apron. So is this, oh, that's still wet. Okay, let's go over and fix this one. So this was supposed to be a rose. And basically the rose shape is a bunch of celery stock, uh, celery stock uh, part of the celery stock, right? So it's shaped like a crescent, see that? So this one here is rounded. I'm gonna have a round one over here. This one comes up and goes like that. This one's over here. So basically I'm just following what I see this to be the shape of. So this is kind of wet, so. There would be one here. We have another one over here. And so you, you follow how that, how that works. And believe you me, I am not, you know, I do not know how to draw. I'm just trying to follow what I think would be logically the inside of the celery. Make sense? Wipe off my wet paint off of that one. Then I can take that color. Actually, let me go over to the purple. And make that one purple. And then to do that, I'm going to use a round brush if I can find it. I have tons of brushes, never one right at my fingertips. Let's go with this one. Yeah, this is a big one. 
Okay, get all the water out. Make sure you always get all the water out. This is a nylon brush, and um, typically that's what you would be using as a nylon brush for painting on fabric. The hairs are firmer than a sable. I hope Melissa is watching the chat because I, I am not viewing it on my screen. I, I've been watching it. We don't have a chat, but I did hear a beep and I don't know what that was. Okay. So if you start off thin and put a lot of pressure in, and then lift off on your pressure, start thin, put pressure, lift off, thin, put pressure, lift off, you'll get that crescent look. This brush goes right back to a peak as well, so that's nice. I can do the little peaks in here. Okay, let's see where we're at. Is that still? Let me hit that with a blow dryer. That's so cute, and the, the vibrant color next to that pale pink, that's adorable. Very nice, Cindy. Once it's dry, you take your identipen. And you can kind of, if you decide what color you're going to put, I'm going to put the, put the little ones in here. So you know that's your center. So you can bring this down. And then when that's done, you can glue these on or sew these on to your center. If you have sparkle, you can add some glitter sparkle. You can, um, let's highlight that. And I'm going to add white and remember back a while ago now it seems like forever <laughs> i could always have white whatever you do always have white in your um repertoire and i'm going to take that round brush and load it up with some white <gasps> oh <fudge. What? laughs> uh, could you use some purple because i just squeezed out a whole bunch when i was trying to that's okay so I'm going to highlight some white in the top. And I know that, you know, it, white's on my background, so it's not really going to do much. But we can, if you have the yellow still wet, you can go in with, let's say I put some yellow here. I can pick up some white and I can just blend that right in. Oh, that was too much. 
And then if you have a darker color, this is, I'm gonna go with a peach. But if you had a darker yellow or a peachy tone, we're going to add that to the inside. Actually, this is kind of a glitter. I find that the glitter, the So Soft glitter paints are, are more transparent. So let's move those out of our way for a second. And let me just wash that all right in there. Okay. And if you did like I did, and you got this paint where you didn't want it, if you see over here, I've got dots and I got dots there. You can always, before you start painting, cover those areas up with, um, with your paper towel or a, another piece of cloth, or we can turn them into something spectacular. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put some white on the outside of this. That is so smart. Okay. And again, I know I'm against a white background, but when we outline it with black, it'll pop. The antique store tonight and I bought some pink depression glass your favorite so a birthday present to yourself yep I knew it it's a it's like a bowl that's squished in the middle and on the two ends is a pink bird Ooh. I think the pink flower is done, but let me go see now. This boo boo over here, what can we make that? Mm, a ladybug. Nah. Okay. No. <laughs> but it could be. But if we have a brush that is. Um, like one of these fluffy round ones. And we picked up some of that color. We can make round pom-pom flowers. The world needs more round pom pom flowers. Yep. And see how that hides that right up. I would do like uh, baby's breath and stuff, but we but you can't you can't do baby's breath. It's white. It's a white. I'm going to take some peach. This is shimmering pearl, so that's not going to show up very well. Let's take this peachy color and cover that up. Let's see what I get here. Maybe. I like that. I liked it, like that. If I do just a bud, like it hasn't quite, quite bloomed 100% yet, we're going to do three and take my marker and I can go around that.
So now, let's see what else. If this was dry, I would go back over that. These little pom-pom, Now, here's our bouquet. And, um, we need to pull it all together. And it is a little crazy. We're going to pull them all together and how are we going to do that? You're going to, you're going to envision that there is a center point down here where all your flowers are, are growing out of, okay? Let me get rid of these buttons for a second. So, all of these flowers are growing out of, or should I say, they're in a bouquet from a certain area. Usually it's like the center of our, of our thing. So we're gonna, okay, this one comes like this. This one's gonna come down. This one can come in. These can all cluster together. And join these down here. These can all cluster together here. And then they're gonna come through this and down here. Do you see how I did that? Oh, sorry. See how I did that? So if you want that one over there, once you drew it, obviously you can't erase it. However, um, Think in your mind how it's going, they're going to grow. So this one I'll bring down here. And that one will come through here. So if you want more, you can have more or less as you need it. This is just gonna be a little bit of a hodgepodge of a, an assembly, but you get the idea of how it can be created. Don't forget to Sign your name. Mm. Okay, and you can put more design in here if you want. Maybe. What else do I have? So, yet more color. Okay. That dry? Let me dry this one. Now, if you are, um, a collector of buttons and you want to go vintage you can always take these um, vintage buttons from Tim Holtz and you can put these in the middle as well and you can make actual um, make the buttons themselves be a flower if you wanted to. So, I kind of like that up there.
So yeah, if that's, you know, if that's something that you uh, enjoy. Doing collecting buttons. That is definitely something you can use them for. Let's see, where are we at? So this, these little puffs here can use some highlight. So I'm going to take a darker color. You can take the um, color that you base them in and you can add white to it. And then that would highlight it. And you can also take some of this darker color and you can tuck that in and create a little darker value in some of the areas. And you could do it with the same brush that you put that on with if you wanted to. I just happen to grab this one. I'm going to go and grab a darker purple because I want to add a little bit of purple to when you're when I'm painting I like to add at least three colors to each thing because that gives it more depth and dimension. Seven is heaven they say if you have seven values of the same color that that is why things and oils look so real because most of them use seven values to each color. Hmm. And um, if things don't look right to you, it could be because there's not enough value change. And what's going on? Not enough values used. See how I'm just putting it on one side of the brush and I know that's probably hard to see on camera. But I'm not covering the whole brush with this color. I'm just, I'm just putting it against the inside edge. I'm not really used to working on something this large. I feel a little out of my element, but Can you see how that works? I don't know. What did you just do? Oh, you're adding colors to the middle of where of the rows. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, some darker color to the inside to try and create that. Um, I'm going to add a little tufts of white to the outside of this one. This one here, if you didn't, if you, like my lines are a little bit bigger than my rubber stamp was, so I can go in and put more of that color in here. This is fun. Are you having fun, Jilly? Wave if you're having fun. Woohoo! Look at hers. Ooh, hold on. Let me uh, let me spotlight that. Wow. Uh, Double click on her picture. I am. That's me. My messy room. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. I'm so impressed. I love it. So what did you put on the inside of your bag to keep it firm or for backing? Plastic? Good. Very Plastic good. Kit. I also, I have been known to use cardboard covered with wax paper or um, saran wrap or something like that, or even a grocery bag. 
And okay. so here, if the paint goes through the fabric, it doesn't uh, mess up the other side, like in the tote bag, it doesn't mess up the other side or on a t-shirt. And they do make okay. boards that you can buy and you can stick that on there or you can wrap it around and tape it taut so it doesn't slide. But I find the freezer wrap paper gives it a little bit more, you know, firmness. So it doesn't uh, go crazy on you. So I'm going to go. I, if you can hear me now, I'm loving this. This is great. I'm loving it. I guess <laughs> you know, like to the buttons. Do we get to yes. use glue? You glue? Can. You can you can use glue. You can do a glue gun if you want. <laughs> it's funny because I was excited about being able to sew them on. I was like, can we sew them on? We can do that well, too. And I was thinking I was thinking I'd glue them on and then tighten them up with a little thread later when it's dry. Yeah. Probably yeah. yeah. I'm just thinking, can you get the needle through the glue once the glue's dry? Mm hmm. Oh, that's the magic part. <laughs> yeah, that's the magic part. And for Melissa, I got some fine glitter stuff here, which I'm wearing lots of glitter already. Good for you. You got a sparkle. And so you can stick the glitter on. And oh, look at that. I I know you can't see it, but I see it. Oh. Uh, it's blinging the... Um, it's blingy. It doesn't change. It doesn't change the color. This particular one, flexible fabric paint, ice crystals, fine glitter. So it's not changing the color of your painting. It's just adding glitter. Hmm. Let me see if I can hold it up to the light so you can get some. I don't know if you can, you can't really tell, but I can tell it, it. it is there. So I'm going to just glitter up all my blossoms. Now, after we do this, and I have to, I'm just going to have to glitter it because now, if you're into Swarovski crystals or the hot, there's um, crystals that you can, um, what is it? Remember that bedazzle stuff? <laughs> Anyways, yeah, something like that. You can bedazzle this or you can add um, the hot fix crystals to this as well. And that that would really glitz it up. Hmm. Hello. Who's here? Pam is back. I'm adding glitter to my piece. Just in honor of Ms. Meliz. Yay. I don't know. I guess I'll just go right ahead and I'll put it over the this too. You know if you use glue and you glue your your um Lucy what's it on? The buttons on if they fall off what you just glue them back on again right right all right okay let's see where we're at so now we have two we have we have another choice to make we can either um draw a ribbon on and paint it or we could take some ribbon and glue it on. And I have some fancy ribbon with polka dots. So to tie a bow, you have the two ends, right? Where are we? Two ends. I'm going to fold it in half, find the middle. I'm going to come about what an inch and a half to two inches on either side. Fold that in half. Fold that in half. So now it looks like the T, right? Take those two bows, and I guess I'm going to have to be bigger. So let's go about three inches out. Okay. Find the center. 
find the center. Now I have two rabbit ears, right? And I'm going to fold them, loop them around, and pull that up through the middle. Hello, thank you for joining us. I'm trying to show people how to make a bow. So I tied the knot tight, twist it around, and now we have a flat bow. So when we come over to here, we can open this up a little bit more. Then we can come over here and we can glue it on or you can sew it on. I thought about cutting the fabric and then putting it in through through the uh, apron, but I'm like, no, I don't think so. I think I would just glue that on. Leaves, we didn't do leaves yet. Let's do some leaves. I've got two shades of green, but you know, if you have one shade of green, you can always um, add white to it to darken it. You can actually use this for leaves as well. If you were to use this as a leaf, it would look like, make sure all the water's out of it. See? Oops, I didn't get the on that one. So pick and see where your leaves gonna live. You can have them coming out here. You can have it coming out over here. And another thing you can do with this is take your um, filbert brush, that rounded one, take that filbert brush. You can do what they call a double load. So half the brush is loaded with the light value and the other side of the brush is loaded with the dark value. See how that looks? Now with the dark value down, we're going to set it down and twist and lift. So set it down, twist and lift. Set it down, twist and lift. And it makes these little leaves. This one here didn't come out so well, so I'm going to go and set that down and just paint that in a little bit stronger. So that's how and if it doesn't move for you, Go grab some of that flow me that medium, that fabric paint medium, and then you can get it to move a little bit more. Sometimes they're kind of thick and it needs a little help to make it move a little smoother. Now this one here is a, is a partial blossom. So let's kind of give it 
this little calyx, that little greenery that comes up on both sides of it. When it's a newbie and it's just starting to grow. Let's see. I'm going to put one over here. Oops. Keep the dark on the same side. So you know that these all have to be attached to something too, right? So what you do then is take that identipen and you can attach them and draw, if they're dry, a center vein in them. If they're not dry, I would not do it until they are dry. You can go right up to them. That one's there. Some of them are going to be I also have these rubber stamps. They're round, so I could always go and take Hello. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to take some purple, darker purple, and I'm going to add some designs. You can't see that, but it's pretty cool. Hi, everybody. Molly and Lee, thank you for joining us. It's great to see you here. We're painting flowers onto fabric. We're going to use buttons to decorate them with and ribbon to make it look like we've created a bouquet and we tied them all together. I, I also freehand, freehanded some while I got paint on myself. Cool. <laughs> so if you want to see. Yes. But, um, I'm using a clipboard on the background. That's great too. Should have a wax paper on the clipboard so when it goes through it doesn't uh, Oh, this is an old clipboard, but so. that's, that's very pretty. pretty. Very Thank pretty. you. It's getting there. So these three were the stencils, and then these I just followed what what Sydney was doing. There you go. Love it. Put some of your leaves separate from the away from the stem. Not finished the the leaves yet. I'm starting with my second color, second value. So, um, whoops, there goes my buttons. My buttons flying around. I'm just going to repeat some color and some design. And if you want, you can put like, one color on one side and another color on the other. Wipe off your brush. And let's see what happens when I put that on. Put two purples next to each other. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to paint yellow. Oops, it's still wet. I'll let that dry and then I'll paint it. Let's do yellow. Get the purple off of that one. Okay. So yellow, 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 yellow. And 
And these could be buttons too. Really cool. washing the stamps off as I go to get the acrylics off. So if I wanted to use them with ink, I could. Which, by the way, we could use them with the stays on ink. Did we use stays on ink for the um, ceramic tiles? Yes. So we could do the same with this. And then what's nice is these the little flowers I just added, we could add a little button centers. Because this one we said we're going to put these here. The only thing if we just glued them on, I think what would happen is if in the wash the glue might become, you know, soft. But say we go and we put these little, I think I like the blue ones in there. Let's put the green one in the middle of the purple blue one in the middle of the peach. What else do I have? Blue one over here. I can do purple in the middle of the yellow. The green one. That doesn't have any. So let's put the green one over there. Maybe I'm going to end up. So see how that, see how that's coming together? I think it's Crazy, crazy, crazy. So now if you have any kind of, um, if you have any kind of, uh, you know, I'm cooking, painting, cleaning, anything that you have to go to when you want to need an apron, voila, you have an apron. <laughs> or a bag. <laughs> or a bag. Or you can make a blanket, I suppose. So I think I can either now choose to go back and um, can even have some buttons just willy nilly. But if I can go back and um, outline the little ones that I created as well with that black marker. As long as it's dry, you can do that. So you can go back and Almost like doing a Mandela, huh, Melissa? Yeah, kinda. That one in the middle. And outline your leaves. All the, you know. So if your brush isn't working and it's the way you want it to you can outline the item and it brings back that shape that you were trying to create when you put the paint on. You don't, it's not perfection, right, Melissa? That's right, Cindy. Does not have to be perfect, although yours is pretty close. Nah. No, no, not at all. Oh, 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go back over and do these lines. It really has to be dry before you start drawing yeah. on it. Definitely. 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 Let me go blow dry mine. Be right back. Okie dokie. Oops. So thank you. I'm now. Are we going to sew the buttons on, or did you? You can either sew them on, or you can um, glue them on. Whichever. If you're going to wash this, I probably would sew them on. And I think the same with the ribbon. I think I would sew those on as well. So let's see. I was going over here, and I was just sharpening up my ink lines. so that, that that showed up a little bit better. Did I get everything? Okay. So to sew on your buttons, you can use either a regular thread or you could actually use a floss, some embroidery floss. Where would I have gotten that from? There. Let me put this up here. And that there. And that there. Aha. It has to go here. Okay, I'm missing a little one there. And what did I, where was this one? Oh, I see, it was here. So notice where your buttons are. Blew my buttons, so I'm sure I have buttons missing somewhere. Can you see my buttons? Whoa, there go some of my buttons. <laughs> <laughs> we may have to tack them with something first. I also have, I mean, they sell these at like, you know, in the craft section of your hobby store. So I can actually go with darker, more twinkly ones if I wanted in different colors. So I showed you how to do the tie the ribbon. And I use, like I said, the identi pen, or you can use um, a Sharpie. Make sure it's waterproof when you go to use that. But the identi pen is for fabric. Um, I know that some people use it when they when they have to bring a parent to a resident's home. They need to mark their fat their clothes up. so that they don't disappear. And then I put glitter on it as well. There you go. Okay. 
connect everything back. Back to the beginning. And if you want to put some floopy leaves here. Everything's connected. Oops, this guy is not connected. Let's connect him over here. Okay. I added a couple leaves, so I'm going to go get some green. And just put those in. I have a glue from Aileen's that fabric fusion, permanent fabric adhesive. It's washable, non-toxic. And we're going to see what happens when we use it. I've never opened it. So I'm going to put some on the, so if I pick up one of my buttons and I stick it in the glue, what's the worst that can happen, right? They become unglued. Man, glue, glue, glue. And then I'm going to put the bow on too. And I think I use the same. The good thing about this is it dries clear. Oh, I didn't ground that to anything. Oh, well. So again, to recap, if you're going to use your acrylic, bottled acrylic paint, make sure you get some fabric uh, painting medium, textile medium to mix with it. Otherwise, I recommend DecoArt So Soft paints because they're washable and they, um, they won't crack. They're very soft when they're dry and pliable. I also use some So Soft Fine Glitter. Although you can't tell on camera, I can see it shimmering in the light. The IdentiPen for outlining or drawing on your design to begin with. My experiences with that, it doesn't wash away. I'm using the fabric fusion from Aileen's to glue on these buttons, but obviously if you have time, you can sew them on. And 
And you can do this on t-shirts, tote bags. Jilly's doing her on a tote bag. You can do them on anything. you want. You can use a cookie cutter, stencil, freehand, rubber stamp. You can create templates yourself from rubber stamps or um, this isn't even a real button. No, it looked like one from the bottom. That on there. Maybe I don't have enough glue. Let's see. What can I apply the glue with? Let's take a palette knife. This one has a funny bottom. That may or may not stick. We're already adhering. Yay! Did I get them all? I think I got them all. I like it when things work. Now for the bow. I think I'm just gonna go up here. And I know not all my stems met in the same area, but we're gonna pretend, right? I like pretending. <laughs> <laughs> How's yours looking while you're on screen? Show me. Yeah. Okay, I'll show it to you. Here it is. Um, I gotta put a couple more buttons. Can you see it? Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, hold on. Let me spotlight it because every I have it on every time someone talks. The uh, oh, there yeah. you go. Look at that. So, what kind of texture did you use on the big blue purple flower, purple blue flower? Uh, I just uh, used different um, layers and colors of sharpies and a little bit of brushing on of paint. Awesome. Little, just kind of smudge some paint over it. I made it a little. And then I did some little circles um, throughout it to make it, I was just practicing, see. So the Sharpie, hey. you, the Sharpies, I like your lips. The sh <laughs> <laughs> did you yeah. notice that Melissa, her lips? <laughs> yeah. Uh, next to her name. Yeah, the floating lips. So now <laughs> the, the Sharpies, you're using regular colored Sharpies. Yeah. Good. Just and have you done that before? On fabric? Uh, yeah, but it's been a long time. Beautiful. I love your, your uh, li lily. Yeah, I, I'm actually happy with it. Yeah. yeah. It's, my, it's my wedding. It's my wedding flower. Oh, I love lilies. They're yeah. very, very symbolic. So anyways, what do you think, ladies, huh? Very fun. I love it's it. Gorgeous. It's fantastic. It's really it's very light. I'm sorry, I interrupted. It's okay. Sorry. What did you say? I said it was very, it's very light and fresh, very springy. Yes, yes. Like it. It is the color. It's a lot of fun. I'm still playing around with the colors of my flowers, but they came along pretty well. I think it's gorgeous. Oh, yes. Very pretty. Oh, I love it. Yes. So yeah, we'll see how well this fusion fusion uh, adhesive stays up. So what do you think, Melissa? This was a quickie. Um, it's 9.30 though, so that's our two hour time slot. It got, you know, it went by so fast and it was really great. Look, I got paint on me. I got, I, it, I'm happy. I got my 
fingers in the paint and I made something that's really cute and I can't wait to go sew my buttons on. Look, I've got this little fabric kind of button that's gonna go in here. That's pretty. And um, I've got a little shell button that's gonna go over here. And it's just, you know, it's fun. It really is. And now, and I'm gonna sign it. And I'm, I, when I grow up, I wanna be just like Cindy Harrison. So excited. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. Look at that. It's like I'm I'm full of paint too. Oh good. <laughs> High five. Paint with heart. <laughs> I don't like being full of paint. You know how that goes. So now that you I'm, don't like glitter either, but glitter loves you. No, I've got glitter all over me too. So now that I'm done, I'm just going to take this off like this. Just peel it off. Hey, there's a button. So next week is going to be the week before I go out to Ohio. Oops, you're showing us? Hold on, let me. I signed it. Oh, it's beautiful. It's getting there. Okay, so next week what? Are we not going on to be on next week? Next week we're going to do a watercolor sunset and the following week which is the week of August 7th I'll be in Ohio teaching at the Hoot Convention if anyone's in that area stop by and say hi and so instead of a show on the 11th I believe you are going to do a Twitter party and um, you'll have more questions for me and I will answer them and you will give away prizes. Yeah, exactly. In fact, what we're going to do is um, you, there, the questions are going to be for both of us. And Robin uh, Wright is going to be our um, MC host. And she'll ask the questions and moderate um, all of our droves of people who will be coming to our Twitter party to win prizes. And some of the prizes will be um, paint or uh, paint brushes or tools that uh, Cindy has been so gracious and to, um, to donate as, a, as prizes. But also, you have a chance to win uh, a consultation or or a phone call with Cindy. So um, why don't you tell us about that, Cindy, because that's a really neat thing. And she's so back. It's a, it's a critique. If you, if sometimes there, you get to a point when you're painting and you just don't understand the written word, you don't see what they're talking about, or you're intimidated by what you're supposed to do next. So a lot of times that that stops the painter from continuing painting that project or finishing a project. I'm sure we, most painters have a lot of undones in their closet underneath their beds and everywhere where they, they started a project and got disenchanted with it and hid it away for a rainy day. Mm -hmm. So I would like to be that person who's there to help you pull that piece out or open that book and say, yes, I can. And I will help you finish that project or start that project, whatever you need me to do, or critique something you've already done and you're not quite sure, you know, where it's at. So that's what it's going to be. Um, 15 minutes and ask me whatever you want. Show me whatever you want. Painting related. That's awesome. That's so awesome. Thank you very much. And if you don't know what a Twitter party is um, or Twitter chat, Basically, we'll use the hashtag paint with Cindy. Hashtag P-A-I-N-T with W-I-T-H Cindy C-I-N-D-Y. And every time you type that in and the search part of Twitter, all of the tweets and mentions of paint with Cindy will come up. So you can follow the dialogue and there'll be questions and answers and um, you know, a lot of fun. Um, 
conversation and it happens live. But even if you wanted to look at hashtag paint with Cindy right now, you would see our previous Twitter chat. So it stays there forever. So it's really a nice way to communicate with people about a specific thing. And in this case, it's painting with Cindy. <laughs> I'll start sharing. Okay. So it's going to be the same. Oops, hold on. It's going to be. Yeah, we'll, we'll put some details up on uh, at paint or paint with heart on, on Facebook as soon as we get the time and we'll share. Awesome. Do you um, want to say your goodbyes and then I will close it? Okay. So, um, Thank you. If you're watching at home, if you're followed along with us, if you're doing your artwork while watching a video, thank you so much for being here. I'm really proud to be a part of Paint With Heart, and I hope to meet you either online or at on Twitter at either Ms. Meliz or Paint With Heart at Cindy Art Zero. And um, we'll see you next week, for, and hopefully the following weeks ahead for more projects with Cindy Harrison and me, Melissa Reyes. Thank you. So again, thank you from me as well for joining us tonight or on the replay. And I hope that I've inspired you to uh, take out your identipens and start playing on fabric and enjoy the process, enjoy the journey, and remember, paint with heart. Good night, everyone. <laughs>